Welcome to this video series on SQL Server 2008. This is being provided to you by LearningComputer.com. Today we are going to do uh, start off a mini series on query optimization. Um, and I have uh, some of these uh, applications running already, so let's jump right into it because we are trying to stay within uh, 10 minutes. Um, I have Microsoft uh, SQL Server Management Studio open here. We will be looking at a database called Sales, and if you expand the tables, we essentially have one table called a Document underscore Data. If you go to uh, Properties of the table and select Storage, uh, we have uh, 220,000 rows in here. So that's a pretty good size uh, data set. As far as keys, we don't have anything here. Um, as far as uh, index keys uh, or primary keys and then we also do not have any indexes on it so pretty basic table I will uh, go ahead and minimize this so we can talk about the actual code uh, first of all we are using two uh, dbcc commands to empty the buffer cache and procedure cache uh, essentially when you are trying to do a, a query uh, tuning you want to run these so that the uh, cache is cleared so you will get uh, uh, clean results and the next thing we need to do is we um, also run these two uh, statistics command to get uh, information from the uh, IO uh, which is the disk activity and the also CPU time so uh, these four commands we are going to run every time we are testing code and you also need to turn on your execution plan before we execute the query and you do that by clicking on this icon over here so the tip number one that we have is that you need to limit the number of columns returned from a query so uh, here we have an example of returning everything from that table as opposed to uh, returning specific columns so first off I will copy this out here because anything in the green code is commented out and I will go ahead and run this to get us started uh, it looks like it executed successfully we are returning 220,000 rows now if you go to the messages tab this is where we have uh, information on the IO uh, what I'm uh, the two things that I'm interested in is is the logical reads which is the actual number of uh, data pages that SQL Server had to read to get um, our information so that number is 2286 so I will go ahead and write that down here and uh, the CPU in our case was 499 uh, so let me change that also and that will vary as your uh, as your server experiences experiences different loads but I don't have anything running on it so this should be pretty consistent if you click on the execution plan you'll notice two main things one is uh, we just did a table scan which essentially means that SQL Server had to uh, get uh, the information from going through all the records in, in the table and now if you right click on this icon uh, we are interested in what uh, reads estimated subquery cost and the cost right now is 1.93 so I will go ahead and write these numbers down now the next thing I'm going to do is take this one out and then copy the next one up here so now instead of returning all all the columns we are going to just go ahead and return one particular column now in this table it, it's not going to make that big of a difference because this is a small table but imagine if you have a uh, table with maybe 50 60 columns and every time you're uh, needing data you're returning those 60 columns that will add um, your core to your query cost so now we just return one column if I go to messages uh, let's go ahead and look the number of reads is the same 2286 but notice the CPU time it actually went down to 172 so I will go ahead and put that here reads was the the same and as far as my cost uh, 
uh, it's still did a table scan because we don't have an index and the query cost is 1.93 so let's go ahead and put that here so that was our first step uh, which is limit the number of columns returned moving on to the second uh, tip which is to create a primary key on the table so I will uh, switch back to my object explorer and I will expand the table and actually right click on it and select design and right click on this field and this is our unique identifier and select uh, primary key notice that when I did that it go ahead and uh, went ahead and uncheck the allow nulls I'm going to close that and it's asking me to save it I will say yes uh, Go ahead and say yes. So all we did now is we just created a primary key on the table. We will again uh, go here and return all the data and run this again. Now if you go to your messages you'll notice that uh, it improved it a, a slightly the number of logical reads went down to 2047 so this is now under our tip number two Oops. and if we switch back the CPU time is 297 And if you, we go to the execution tab, it went down slightly, so 1.75. But notice here now, instead of doing a table scan, we are doing a clustered index scan, which in our case uh, is pretty close to being a table scan. But uh, we do have slight improvement on this. So it says no, uh, no performance gain, which we actually saw it slightly. However, the important point is that now you have a primary key or a unique identifier on the table. So that's a good practice to have that um, essentially on any table that you create you should have a primary key uh, or in other words a unique identifier. Now the third uh, point is um, definitely uh, the one that's going to make the biggest difference. Uh, it says create an index on a column uh, on all the columns in the where clause. So now we have an example of uh, we are going to run this to create an index because uh, remember we created a primary key on this already. So if I do a refresh, notice that there is a primary key which creates already a clustered index on uh, that first key. So but if you didn't do that that's where you would create the index I will go ahead and bring this up to the top and let's go ahead and run this notice how fast it was now if you go to the messages tab down towards the end notice this is where it made, made, made the huge difference so the logical read was only three uh, CPU basically it, it didn't even really take any time to process so and if we go to the execution plan this is what we really want to see in our queries which is a clustered index seek uh, and when it's using this it knows exactly where that data is and uh, if we click on this icon notice that our sub subtree cost is 0 0.003 so let me just go ahead and add that in here And we noticed that the logical reads was only three, and CPU basically was zero. So I think that's all we're going to talk about here. Uh, we didn't have time to talk about profiler, which we do cover in another video series, and uh, we will come back soon with a, another tip regarding query optimization.